my very first solo backpacking trip was on a section of the PCT and uh, there was a moment that first night where I had to decide uh, do I let the sounds around me uh, keep me up at night, stress me out, or do I uh, decide that these are unfounded fears and relax? So I've been camping my entire life, but it hasn't been until the last couple of years that I really started to explore it more independently. And I have to say, every single one is a grand adventure. The first couple of times sleeping alone are very frightening. I mean, it was a little bit scary at first. I had no idea what I was doing. When the evening was getting close and I was trying to decide on a spot to camp, I became so anxious and so scared that my hands were shaking when I was trying to get my tent out of my pack. I was pretty much scared of everything. Um, like from animals to getting lost to people. Just the thought of being vulnerable while I'm asleep to anybody that could come up to my tent and try to mess with me and murder me. My main fear is um, not having contact with my daughter and my husband and my two dogs. He noticed and pointed out that I was staying there by myself. Um, and he asked me what I was doing for myself. The fear of, you know, someone coming along and seeing that I was alone and robbing me of my pack or um, attacking me. Coming up to camp and realizing that I was kind of stuck for the night with someone who made me uncomfortable or creeped me out. Sometimes it can be quite scary and I've had a couple of nights camping where I've just been so terrified all night. At night it did make me feel a little uncomfortable. but this guy and other people knew I was by myself. Anything that was unknown, so I didn't know um, if I could do it. Just not knowing if I had enough experience to, to be able to do it by myself. I also had fears that maybe my camping gear would fail me in some way, not knowing how to improvise. I remember I spent so many months preparing and just researching, getting all my gear, everything together. But this one trip, I actually went to Gothic Basin and um, I remember sending out a message to everybody in here and tell them where I was going when I was coming home and when to call for help and I was literally uh, convinced that I was not going to come back alive. It was probably around midnight um, and I started to hear a scratching noise outside. I woke up in the middle of the night and I heard some noises from what I thought could only be a boar. There was a bear alert in the area where I was camping. I was really nervous about a bear encounter when I was alone. My biggest fears were actually wild animals. The fear came more from the animals. Another thing that concerned me was the wildlife. And I'm not gonna lie, I was definitely afraid. At that time we had a cougar problem and a lot of coyotes as well and I was just absolutely Terrified. I woke up like to the sound of what I thought was a woman just like screaming bloody murder. Um, <laughs> it turned out to be a screech owl, but like while it was happening, I thought like, oh my God, they're coming for me next. It ended up getting right up on my tent um, and scratching right on my tent. I was pretty freaked out. An animal was sniffing at my tent right by my head, literally by my head. I was really scared that it would come and take me out of my tent or maybe just tackling me. I did see some wildcat-like paw prints while I was looking for a camp spot, um, so that, that was scary. Oh, so you're a woman, you're a young girl and traveling alone. I've heard of things happening, and I quote, like women being accosted. Just like the horror stories I would read about, you know, getting lost in the woods, um, almost dying of hypothermia. All of my reservations came from friends and family calling me crazy for solo hiking and were worried about me. I realized I was letting what other people were thinking get to my fear. I realized that all those things were not things that I was afraid of, but rather what I was told to be afraid of. There's no reason ladies cannot backpack alone. Don't listen to the naysayers. I never saw a reason why would I be less capable of doing this than a man. And then I realized I really just needed to relax. I was not inherently in danger just because I was alone. I realized that I should just trust in what I know and what I can do. But before my first trip, I was extremely nervous. I was really, really nervous. 
the first time that I went camping on my own, I was very nervous. Even though I was lucky enough to grow up backpacking and adventuring in the outdoors with my dad and my brother, my first solo experience was still nerve-wracking. I was really nervous for the first day. Um, I was constantly trying to think, where is my pocket knife? Did I leave it in my backpack? Is it in my pocket? I hardly slept at all that first night. Um, I would startle at any little noise, like twigs breaking, um, animals rustling around me. There's just something different about that first time that you venture out totally on your own, um, where the wind is whipping against your tent, and you wake up in the middle of the night because you hear the mice scratching and they just sound louder than they ever did before. I doubted everything. I doubted what I packed. I doubted my skills. I doubted the weather. I was like the jumpiest backpacker. The very first time I ever went backpacking by myself was only the second time I had ever gone backpacking. So my very first solo backpacking experience was my first backpacking experience ever. So the first time I ever went out solo by myself was when I first got into backpacking and I actually didn't have very many friends at that time who wanted to go outside and I knew it was something that I wanted to do with or with out anybody like it, I was so set on it that like not having anybody to go with wasn't going to stop me. The first time I actually ever did any kind of camping or hiking alone was when I turned 19 and I decided that I wanted to do a road trip out to the Grand Canyon. I've been adventuring solo for gosh, I don't know, 10 years. The driving course behind me doing solo adventures is that if I don't do it now, when am I going to be able to do it? A big reason why I go out by myself is because I work two jobs and uh, it's hard for me to be able to have the time to go on a nice weekend backpacking trip or even week-long, month-long, whatever long backpacking trips. I didn't have a friend who could come with me and my boyfriend had work and school to attend to, so I wasn't gonna let that stop me. When I was 16 years old and uh, I just got in this huge fight with my mom and I decided to storm out of the house and jump into my truck at the time and just drive up to the mountains. I only ever started camping last year. I had no experience prior to that. And all of my trips I went on by myself. So if you feel like your life is hectic and you feel like your schedule is limited, your finances are limited, and it's all about even just finding an opportunity to go, and if it's turning out like you'll only be able to go if you go by yourself, do it. I decided to go alone because it's really hard to find anybody that wants to backpack, let alone has the time or the same schedule. I've learned that I love backpacking way too much to let other people not going with me limit me from going out at all. I made connections that I probably never would have if I was traveling with someone else. I'm also a person of faith and I just prayed a lot that I would meet people out on the trail and I did. And I met this amazing um, dad and her, his daughter and they were going on a little trip together and they were just so sweet and welcoming. I went out by myself. I came back with friends. Everything is terrifying until there's one moment where that all kind of settles. Being able to experience seeing the Milky Way and camping out for the very first time um, was not only such an empowering thing for me to do at that age, but it also made me feel like I belonged somewhere. I'm a Lone Ranger on trail and at camp because I just really crave that solitude and quiet time. Having that quiet time is everything to me. I also way prefer sometimes being outside in nature by myself because I just need to get such a break from being at work and studying and being around people and it's just you and like the mountains and it's just gorgeous. But I enjoyed the solitude um, quite a bit to be honest. I came out of the experience feeling very happy, very fulfilled. It's very calm and peaceful. It was so peaceful and it was so beautiful and I was alone on the top of this beautiful hill and I was having my dinner watching this amazing sunset and I felt so in peace and so good with myself. 
that from that moment on, I was hooked. I was so excited and I felt free and calm and so relaxed. Being out there is, it's amazing. I think the biggest takeaways is that it's absolutely amazing and it's phenomenal and it's 100% worth it 100% of the time. I remember coming home or getting, walking out of the trailhead and getting in my car and being like, wow, I made it out alive just fine. Those moments where I am alone out there feeling like that, that's why I go out camping alone because it's, it's just amazing. So it gives me time to distress and do some introspective work on anything I'm going through. You go out there and you challenge yourself in so many different ways and you're able to connect with yourself on, in so many different ways. Your senses are so heightened and everything just has a, an extra beautiful film around it. For me, it's a really empowering experience. I do feel stronger and more confident in myself after each trip, and I just think it's really exciting to go and check out a new area by myself. It's made me a lot more independent and confident in myself, just in my everyday day life. I mean, it's super fun to be with people, but there's something really great about just having total control of your day. I just like to get away sometimes and not talk to anyone or look at my screens or anything like that. I love the feeling of like not relying on anybody except myself. It can be very peaceful to enjoy nature by yourself. You kind of get to soak it in more. I never really feel more connected with myself than when I'm hiking. So there's a lot of confidence that comes along with that. And it's really made me more confident too. It always gives me so much um, confidence in myself and my ability to um, get out there and do things for myself and enjoy it. Hiking at your own pace and making camp wherever you feel like making camp is awesome. And every time I went out, it was like a trial and error. And it just made me feel so confident in myself that, you know, I did all of the packing, all of the preparing, all of the research, the route, um, everything that I could to the best of my ability. And I made it out alive. <laughs> You've trained for this, you learned and uh, studied and you're gonna wake up in the morning and have your coffee and your breakfast and break camp and hike down that mountain and have a beautiful day. I think solo hiking is one of the most rewarding experiences and it really allows you the chance to take in yourself and you know collect your thoughts and be with yourself, which is not something that you can do in a normal everyday life. You pick it up and you get used to it and I just think that you learn a lot like what you're capable of doing if it's something that you want to do, I think you should try and you'll be surprised at how fun it is. Number one piece of advice that I would give to somebody is always pack a positive attitude. It doesn't matter how much research you could do, it doesn't matter if you have the best, most expensive gear. Having a positive attitude is key towards any trip because anything could possibly go wrong. You could see a bear and it could eat all of your food or um, maybe your pack gets dropped into a river. Anything can happen, but if you have a bad attitude, that's gonna turn any trip into a sour one very quickly. You need to have a really solid head game because when you're out there, it ends up being just you and your thoughts and as women, we get a lot of messages and a lot of things that internalize, like you can't be in the wilderness alone or something bad will happen to you. And you know, having that head game being like, hey, listen, I'm capable, I prepared, I know what to do, to be able to push back on those thoughts is um, really empowering. So I chickened out and I went to stay in a hotel and that's okay, you can do that sometimes. It's okay to be scared and to like, know your limits and like know what you're comfortable with. So I did the first thing that popped into my head, which was just to sing. Uh, my mother used to do it to me um, when I was a kid and I was nervous or scared. And just getting out there and doing it and knowing that like sometimes you're gonna have irrational thoughts and just slowing down and realize that you're in a beautiful place and a lot of it's probably in your head. And uh, the more that you do it, the easier it'll get. I think the longer I've been doing it, the more confident and comfortable I've become out there. 
to the lesson feeding that fear. I think those little baby steps over and over again just makes you more confident in your skills and your abilities in the outdoors as an outdoor woman. When you push yourself out of your comfort zone, your comfort zone grows. Just know that you're in control. If you feel like any inkling of, um, I'm not safe here, just get out of here. It's an easy fix. I think I beat the fear by doing, which was every day just just taking one more step and then the nights were less scary when I knew that the days weren't scary and that even the darkness was kind of really soothing and velvety and not ominous anymore and I got used to the sounds and I got more confident in what I could do and that made me much more trusting in where I was. If you've never done it before, start small. A lot of it was just repetition and getting out there. Even when I first started, um, I would just go car camping by myself and get used to kind of the sounds of nature and sleeping in a tent alone and all of that, but it felt safe because I, I really needed to, I could get in my car and lock it or leave. Hike into a place for three miles, set up your stuff, spend the night, and then hike out the next day. Every time you do a trip, you will become more confident in your skills and your abilities. Don't discount comfort. I brought fairy lights with me on my first backpacking trip and those were so comforting for me to like, leave and come back and see these little like whimsical little fairy lights in my tent and to realize that really in the midst of uncertainty and scariness um, I had this little whimsical thing of beauty almost that I could come back to. Having a lot of practice in a group setting with my um, equipment and knowing my gear really well and preparing for my trips that I take um, and then also just following proper food etiquette to make sure that no animals would bother me. Knowing what animals are in my area and how to deal with that definitely helps. With animals I just try to learn their behavior um, on my own and just kind of understand like what they're after, when they're out, what to do if you see like a bear or a mountain lion or something like that. A lot of my fear went away when I realized that like, and I started truly believing that nature isn't out to get you. Everything out here is just trying to survive and if you're just smart and listen to your gut, that you'll be fine. If you're afraid of, I don't know, animals on the trail, equip yourself with the knowledge of what to do in an, in an encounter. If other people scare you, take a self-defense class. The first thing I did was I wrote down every single question that I had, whether it was something as small as do I need band-aids to what do I do if I see a mountain lion. And maybe for your first trip, try to stay somewhere that you're already comfortable with, someplace that you've hiked or camped before, um, somewhere that's not like creepy and ominous, somewhere where you have like a nice like view around you, like somewhere flat where there's not like a lot of trees and bushes and like things, like places for unknowable things to hide. <laughs> to overcome that fear, I will get a Garmin in reach for both communication and safety. Having my Garmin was really helpful. I didn't have that before the PCT, and now I love that I have it um, just as a kind of like last resort lifeline sort of thing. And then I also use All Trails and uh, Maps 3D and we'll just download uh, my route beforehand um, or an area if I know I'm gonna be like on a bunch of different trails. Um, just to kind of have a backup again so that I won't get lost, um, especially when I'm by myself. But I took inspiration from all the uh, women solo through hiking. And if they could do this for uh, several months, then I can do this for one night. And I had a mini scotch before I went to sleep. It's a very joyous and empowering moment where you kind of realize like, if I can do this, I can freaking do anything. I think there's something so incredibly empowering about, um, you know, going out hiking, camping, you know, road tripping, backpacking, whatever, um, as a woman by yourself. There's something very deeply spiritual about it too. Just gotta go for it. Only person stopping you is you. It's an amazing feeling though when you set up you camp by yourself and you make your campfire and you prepare your dinner and you sit there in total solitude and just get to reflect and take a deep breath and realize that you did it by yourself and you are confident and powerful and capable. I think there's a just a really great lesson to be learned um, on what it's like to feel truly alone. Just keep at it and, and know that you're capable of so much more than you think. Go for it you will not regret it. And if you do, you'll know, hey, this isn't for me.
so I highly recommend you know trying it by yourself and seeing if it's for you. Just going solo isn't for everybody. If it's something you desire or would like to just know what that feels like, 100% definitely go out. Go for it, enjoy yourself. You can totally do it. It's okay to be like a little afraid, a little scared, but you have to have confidence in your skills. You also, um, you know, just have to take the safety precautions. Don't let fear stop you from anything. One of the benefits of going by yourself is that you can really focus on all the sights and sounds around you. Memories are much more intense. Years ago, when hiking over West Maroon Pass to Crested Butte, Colorado, I got lost on the path that back then was just a glorified game trail. I spent the night snuggled next to a giant fallen tree in a cheap plastic tent. Though I was concerned about where the trail was, I was never frightened because the outdoors has always been a place of peace and rejuvenation. After the sun came up, I easily spotted the correct trail and completed the hike. Being by myself enhanced the experience and assured me that each of us can handle whatever comes our way. I would not trade that night on the side of the mountain for anything and still remember it vividly. The incredible stars and the moon and the quiet. Things always work out if you are open to the adventure of it all. I am in my final mile. You know, wanted to say before I, you know, cross the border and finish my hike that, yeah, this has been the most incredible experience. And just the people I've met and the obstacles I've overcome has literally changed me. This has been the most perfect ending to the most amazing adventure. And I'm really sad. But I'm also so happy that I did this. That I just had this like fantasy and this dream. And I just went for it. It's just like learning how to adapt in any kind of situation and knowing how powerful the mind is and how powerful positive thinking can really be. This has been my journey. Me solo hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. And it's just been more than anything I've ever thought this could be but I just hope that I like continue to live my life the way I've lived it on this trail just like fearless and confident and just humbled anyway you guys we're almost there thank you for hiking along with me and I just hope all of you find some fulfillment in your life the way that this trail has fulfilled me. <sighs> Alright, I'm only minutes away from Canada and finally thank you again and happy trails! <laughs> Jennifer for shining a light on women and what we're doing out here and we're amazing.